Hi guys, welcome back. So this is the part two of the ROS Tether Operating Robot. Okay guys, so let's move on to the robot. So first I will need to log into the robot and the robot is power on now. So first thing first, I will need to change my Wi-Fi to the robot Wi-Fi, which is um, this one, GLXE200, D56. Once it connect, we can access the robot by the local IP which is the, uh, wait a moment, 168.8.129. So this is the local IP of the robot. I will need to start up some script first, as I mentioned before, that there is the uh, AT card basic and YD LiDAR and AT card handler here um, on the web dev. There is the base console project here. So this base console project is include everything that I need to run. If I go to auto start script, so you will see that there is a five service file, the ROS280 card basic, ROS280 card handler, and ROS280 card YD LiDAR, C captures, and C no bridge. Each of the service file going to start each of the nodes that I need. Uh, if I go to system D and system, you could see that uh, those service file is already in this system the directory and uh, what I need to do is I just start the system the service file by the system control and start ROS280 card and if I check here there is a 5 uh, ROS280 card service file so I want to start everything right now if we go back to the web dev base console again Go to auto start script. We can check here that there is the um, dot lock. So this dot lock going to output some of the uh, standard output. So we can see that is it running or not. So for example, if I go check on AT card basic, I will see that now this is today. It's already start AT card basic and AT card handler it also already start and then YD LiDAR so the YD LiDAR also start and then the Cnor bridge so Cnor bridge also start lastly the C capture it's already start so we can confirm that again um, checking the last two topic list and then you will see that the there is the JMOAP topics and there is the AT card topics and the scan topics so we can confirm that all the nodes that we need are running now then I will try to check on the web console that the ROS2 data is porting from the robot to the web server or not so for now we are still in the same network of the robot but I would like to check uh, the web console that is working or not first so my AWS domain name is the any PLC that attack lab.console.com but make sure we are using HTTP and then so you can see there's a laser scan data is showing and the card mode uh, data is showing as a radio control and you can see this is a touch or click here then if you touch or click it will just detect um, joystick so now I will try to switch to ROS control and then I will try to move the robot by this joystick then I will move it by like this so you will see it's moving but yeah the video streaming is pretty much slow slower than the command I sent here I already sent but the streaming is not in the real time okay guys so now I use the different Wi-Fi so I use my office Wi-Fi which is the DFC here and the robot is still using the 4G LTE mobile router. I can try to access the console again by right here, HTTP. And everything is working at the same. And then I can try to move the robot by sending this. So you will see that the stream is pretty much faster than before. Then I can just keep moving the robot. So you can see that if there is some uh, obstacle on the left or obstacle on the right in 50 centimeter, 
from the LiDAR, it was just showing some uh, warning to me here on this tag. So I need to just adjust my robot carefully to the right. And then my stream got stuck again. So there's some disadvantage of using the C capture example here that um, the sometimes the frames come really slow. It's pretty much later than the data. Sometimes it will be good and sometimes it's not that good. And the solution for this video lacking issue is we can use the web RTC for the video streaming and using Senor for the ROS2 topic data communication. But for today's demonstration, I'm going to just use the C captures from Senor and later I can show you guys how to use the web RTC for the real time video streaming. So the function on the web console is pretty much working now. I will try move the robot to somewhere else and we're going to control the robot from here in this room and try to challenge a little bit for our demonstration today. Okay guys, so I have moved the robot to the third floor and I'm on the second floor of the office. So I'm going to try to move the robot from here. Okay guys, now so I placed the robot outside of the office, so it's in the parking lot now. And now I'm going to control the robot via the iPad by the web browser. So same thing, I'm going to go to the any, wait a moment, any plc.trialup.console.com and just go there. So you will see that I can get the data, everything same as previous. And if I turn on the light, here, the light is working. So I can move the robot by left and right joystick, like for example, um, throttle here, and I can do the steering at the same time to make it turn, and then steering to the left. And yeah, you will see that now the signal is pretty good. The, I can see the video streaming quite pretty much in real time. I can try to increase the speed more. And time to turn. We try to go survey some of the pedestrian, but not that too far from the parking lot because the running the robot on the street still um, illegal in Japan. So I need to be careful. And that is how I teleport the robot over the network. So if you'd like to know more about the middleware Senor that I'm using for this demonstration, 
please check on their website seno.io and there is a lot of documentation and repositories you can follow up and if you want to know more about the AT card basic platform that I use for today please check it on attractlab-shop.com there is a link on the description below if you like this kind of video please press like and share button that can help me very much so thank you for watching and see you soon